everybody. This is Allison from Fanshawe Pioneer Village. Today we are at Alder's Weaving Shed. Thomas Alder's Weaving Shed. Uh, and this is the weaving shed of Wilfred Jury, our founding curator, as well as one of the main proponents in the starting of the Museum of Ontario Archaeology. Uh, he is Thomas Alder is his maternal grandfather. So this was a weaving shed that uh, Wilfred Jury would have gone to very frequently as a child. This building was originally built in 1857 by Thomas Alder. Uh, he was um, originally from Gloucester is where he did his weaving training and when he came here he built this weaving shed. It is not very big. Let's see how far I would have to get to get all of this in the picture. Oh, a little bit further. Not too big. Just a very very small building. I'll move my head out of the way. And he set up this building to be his weaving shed. He built it out of beam and frame construction and he built his barn loom right into the insides of this shop. So let's turn around and we will go on an exploration, shall we? So here we are. Here's our little door. Normally during the summer months our loom is not covered. If you remember when we went to LG Log House a couple of days ago, we mentioned that everything was covered in plastic to help in case there was any sort of leaks. That is the same principle here. We still use this loom. Uh, so this warp was put on by a gentleman named Dan with the help of a couple of his friends from the London District Spinners and Weavers Guild, um, as well as our friend Barb, who is a reenactor and a member of that guild as well. So he brought uh, the metal parts, the him when he immigrated to Canada um, from doing his training in Gloucester. And when he came, this was his whole house. I will show you again from the door, but if I go this way, you can see one wall. And when you go this way, you see the other wall. This was his whole home. And he set up his weaving shop together, and that's how he started getting um, settled here in Canada. He eventually set up a farm as well, and he was able to set up a very successful farm actually and he only had to weave about three months of the year uh, and the majority of his clients they ranged from London all the way up to Chatham and he had originally set up the build business in Melrose and he was very very well liked for his weaving. Uh, he did things like flannel, um, horse blankets, all different kinds of things uh, and he got very, very fast at weaving. So Wilfred Jury recollected that uh, his grandfather could finish the entire warp of his, um, his, on his loom in a single day. He was very, very fast. Now, I don't imagine that he probably was able to warp the entire loom on his own in one day, but you never know. He probably has a, <laughs> he had a heck of a lot more uh, practice at it than I do. And I just am incapable of fathoming being able to warp a loom that fast. Now if he had extra help and maybe if he had made his warp before that he might have been able to. Now something that we chatted about very briefly uh, the other day is that it was gentlemen who generally did the commercial weaving so that fits very well with Thomas Alder. Normally women were the spinners and men were the weavers and that tradition carried on from over in Europe here to Canada. Uh, we talked about that a little bit in our pioneer story uh, when we talked about um, Granny's family uh, in that book. Now Thomas Alder, as I mentioned, he built this building in 1857. He brought with him the harness of his loom and then he constructed the loom right into the building. So you could not separate this loom from this building if you wanted to, which we don't really want to. But when he set up this building to be his weaving shed, as I mentioned, it was his home. So this bench here, where we have things stored for the winter time, was actually his bed as well as his workspace. So in the night, he would out roll out his bed mat and then he would sleep there and he would tuck all of his things underneath, underneath the workbench. Uh, and then during the day, he would 
pull them back out when he needed them. This was his stove. That's it. He didn't have a lot of capabilities of doing much cooking. He would have been only able to do what he could do on top of the wood fireplace there. Eventually, William or Thomas Alder did get married. And let's go outside so we can see this picture a little bit better. Let's see if we can see that. So you can see in the corner, there is the weaving shed. This is Thomas Older with his dog. And then he eventually did get married and builds the rest of this house for his family. Uh, his wife would not marry him until he built her the rest of this house um, so that they would have some place to live with their children. So though this section of the home was built in 1857, the rest of it was added later. Um, and the house, or the weaving shed rather, was donated to the Pioneer Village in 1962. And it was donated by um, William and Ora Alder, who were Wilfred Jury's cousins uh, and the children of Thomas Alder. So they would have been his mother's siblings. Now, what I wanted to do before I leave you today is leave you with another quote from Wilfred Jury. You might have seen it above in the description, but I found it very poetical um, and uh, very beautiful. So I wanted to share it with you. The old shop fascinated me. The steady wang of the packer as it banged home the warp. The skirl of the shuttle were like music, and I watched for hours at grandfather sat upright in the loom. A tall, distinguished-looking old gentleman with a well-trimmed white beard. I was so proud when he taught me to fill the bobbins, and I thought of myself as his helper. And there's actually stories of Wilfred Jury spending long hours helping his grandfather, helping him throw the shuttle back and forth across the loom uh, so that he could help weave faster. Now, eventually, uh, weaving sheds like this were eventually replaced by industrialization um, and weaving became more rapid. It started to use things like punch cards. It became so, so quick that people like Thomas Alder were not able to keep up. But by that point, Thomas Alder was a very, very old gentleman, so it didn't really matter to him too much at that point. But weaving is something that we still do here at the Pioneer Village, and there are a lot of people who do weave uh, for both commercial purposes as well as pleasure still today. And one of the groups that I recommend you look into is the London District Spinners and Weavers. They come out to a number of our events each year uh, if you have any questions about weaving. And we hope that everyone has a lovely day. I will post pictures of the weaving shed down below in the comments after I get home from being at the Pioneer Village. And I will see everyone this afternoon for a story. Have a great day.